Well, good morning. Welcome to Iron Faith Fellowship Church. This is the day the Lord has me. We will rejoice and be glad at it. We're going to go and rejoice today. Our God is awesome. Our God blesses us and takes care of us in ways that we don't even imagine. So let's give our hearts and minds to Him right now. Will you stand up and worship the Lord with us this morning? Yeah. That's it. I want you to remember that. 
This hopefully would drive us to be what we need to be to a lost and dying world. We don't want anybody there. We want them to spend eternity with us. Amen? To be praising and worshiping the living God at His throne with the saints. In glory, that's what's promised. That's what we want people to do. We should never be walking around hanging our heads on one. Well, if they would get saved, they would share with them, witness to them. Let your life shine before them. Be an example to a lost and dying world, okay? Stop making excuses for them. In the church especially, this divided body of Christ that we live in. My goodness, we're so busy fighting each other that the devil's winning the battle here and we're, we're missing the whole thing. But this is real. This, I read this again and I'm like, wow. Man, it doesn't end, it begins. Starting in verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. And from his presence, the earth and the sky fled away. There was no place found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Then another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to them, and according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And if anyone's name is not written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you, Lord, that you reveal to us just the truth of your word. Father, we believe you stand on your word because your word is truth. He says the word of faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's what we've got to stand on. For it's by grace that we're saved through faith and not of ourselves as a gift of God. Not of works as any man should boast. Father, you have a gift out there for us. Father, we thank you. Speak to hearts as only you can. Change lives as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And did you hear what that said? Verse 14 says, Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. So this is the second death. Wow. Some people believe once you die, that's it. It's not it. That's just the beginning. You either go into the presence of God in worship, or you're going to be raised again from the first death to a second death. How many want to die twice? Man, I thought about that. You know, even, even believers struggle with that, don't we? It, it, it's, it's kind of a fearful thing, but we should fear. The Bible says don't fear it because we're not going to die. We're going to go to sleep. If you know the Word of God, it's a rest. It's a peaceful rest that we experience. But these folks that die without Christ will be tormented from the beginning. To be raised again, to stand before a living God, to be judged for what? Their rejection of Him to be cast again into the same death. That should concern us, shouldn't it? If any of us love anybody, especially our family members, why would we want them to go through that experience? We should be doing everything we can possibly do to be sharing Christ with that person. Now, if that person rejects that, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting who? Christ. We're compelled to share Jesus with the lost and dying world. Why? Because we don't want anybody to experience this. When I read this again, I'm like, second death. They're going to be already in torment to be raised up the same before God, and God's going to open that book and say, you know, guys, there's no excuse. It's too late. And you're going to say, Wow, what's, what's the next step? You're going to go back to where you came, only in a worse place. Hell's no fun place. I don't care what anybody out there says. You've seen them out there. And it really bothers me when I hear the people poking fun about a place called hell, because it's real. And it's not going to be down there opening up beer kegs and buying motorcycles all over with your buddies. That's not how it's going to happen. Here's how I picture hell sometimes. You've heard me say this before. You know, us motorcyclists, you know, we'd, we'd love to think our bikes going to be with us in heaven. You know, we joke about those kind of things. But hell would be, that guy who's absolutely adores that motorcycle, he's in hell and he's going to watch everybody else riding and he don't get to. 
You know, everything he loved in this world, and we can't experience that enough. But death is final. Turn me to Luke chapter 16. Just so you know, Jesus talked about hell. We're going to start in verse 19. Probably talk about hell. Some of the Lord say he talked about hell more than he talked about anything else. Why? Because he doesn't want us going there. He doesn't want anyone going there. But remember that death is final. Okay? It's the beginning. There's no way out of it. Once you've made that decision, it's done. Listen to what Jesus says starting in verse 19. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered in sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. Well, that's kind of cold, isn't it? He died and was buried. It's like, now, some people would like to stop right there. But it says what? In Hades, or hell, being in torment, he lifted his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your life received good things, and Lazarus in, in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides this, now pay attention, verse 26, and besides all this, between us and you, the great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who have passed from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Now, did you see a picture of heaven and hell there? It's like they can see. And like, why did Jesus give that illustration? To give you a decision to make that you don't want to go to a place of torment, a place that so puts you in such anguish that just a dip, just a tip of water, just a dip of water in your finger would bring kind of some kind of comfort, but only temporarily. Has anybody ever had, had just a dry mouth? Dry and just couldn't get to any water fast enough? You ever done that? I drive, I drive traveling enough. I'm riding on my motorcycle and I put my water up on my handlebars so it sits in the sun and bakes. So by the time we get done with like a 95 degree ride, my water's probably about 140 degree boiling point. As soon as I get up my bike, they're, they're reaching for Pepsi. He's cold drinking. I grab that bottle of water. He's like, so I don't know how you can do it. That's refreshing. Doesn't matter, but you drink, you, know, you get to that water, you get whatever it wants, refreshing in it. What about if it just didn't refresh? What about if you had that dry throat, dry mouth, and no matter what you kept taking, it just didn't refresh, it just didn't satisfy? And that's not the worst it gets. I'm tormented in this what? Flame. Some people talk about, you know, you don't want to talk about hell, but you talk about a place, there's going to be a constant torment. In this illustration, again, an illustration that you spread, flame. A torment that will put us in anguish forever. There's no comfort. There's no peace. There's no end. Can, I imagine, can you just imagine that and drive that home? There's no way out once you get there. Man, for us believers, that ought to just drive something that ought to absolutely break our hearts. I said, Lord, I don't want anybody in that place. I don't want anyone in that place. I don't care how bad I dislike that person. I don't want that person. No one deserves hell. No one deserves hell. But when we refuse to do what God asks us to do, and that's what? Share the gospel message. What are we saying? I don't care. Grace has been extended to me. I made it. I'm in. Those people are going to have to go through what I went through. No, that's not what you were saved for. You were saved so that you could share a life with somebody so they wouldn't have to go through what you went through. Amen? 
You should not want anybody to have to go what you went through. You give them Jesus so it kind of prohibits going through those things you went through. See, we should be smarter than that. No one deserves even what we went through, amen? But really that we went through something so terrible, there's nothing more terrible than this place. In verse 27, listen to this. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come to this place of what? Torment. But Abraham said, They had Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they did not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone rise from the dead. Now, a good illustration of what Jesus was going to do. But how, how are people today? When we celebrate the risen Savior, how many people were joining with us? Not many. Because they don't believe, do they? How are they going to believe? Through the Word of God, just like Paul's prayed. The Word of God. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. But how are they going to hear the Word of God? From us. Not just on Sunday mornings. Remember, I shared with you, every opportunity you have is an opportunity to share Jesus with somebody. When somebody comes up to you, one of the big bikes and says, you know something? I believe in hell. I've been in hell. So I'm going to heaven. I know heaven can be. Then that's an opportunity to say, you know something? You ain't been no, you don't know the hell of the Bible slip. There's an open door for you. You don't know the hell of the Bible. Because guess what? If you think it's bad now, you don't think it can get any worse, wait till you get there. Now you can't make a choice. Right now you can make a choice. Amen. Think about that. Right now you have a choice to make. There's gonna come a time when that choice is made. It's done. I've never seen anybody sit up in a casket and say, I changed my mind. If, if they did, we'd all be getting prepared to be put in a casket, I can almost assure you. Think about that. When we're looking at that, that tent and that casket, what are we seeing? That's, that's done. That's it. It's a done deal. No one's ever sat up. No one's ever changed their mind. I'm just saying, that's just the beginning. It doesn't stop. Turn back to Revelation 20 with me. I said it right, Bobby. If I put a comment in there, can I say Revelation? Say a little torment in Bobby. Bobby would say, yeah, you're going to torment me forever. just seen that it can be. Back up to chapter 20, verse 6, I like this. Because for us, okay, we're blessed. We're blessed. And it, we extend that gratitude to God when we share our lives with someone else. And see, I didn't really think to someone else, uh, let me share just a quick story with you. Because I wanted my dad to be saved more than anything. My dad was lost. When I got saved, our relationship got established. One of my dad was saved. Now, I was like you guys, most of you guys. I wanted someone else to share Jesus with my dad because I didn't think I had the capability to do so. So I went to my really smart friends and said, you know, my dad's lost. He's coming to visit. I want you to come to my house and share Jesus with him. You know what they said? What's wrong with you? Well, I'm dumb. I don't know enough of the Bible. I don't know what to say. Just share what Jesus did for you. What did Jesus do for you in your life? If he changed you, transformed you, that's what you share. I didn't want my dad to go to hell. Now I went from hating my father to loving my father. Now, did I really love him? If I really loved him, what don't I want him to go to? A place to hell. What did my dad say? But my buddies didn't make excuses for me. He said, you do it. You got something to share. Didn't know what to say. This is where the Holy Spirit takes over for you. 
Don't worry about what to say. Just be obedient to God and the Holy Spirit will give you what to say in your time of need. So I said, Dad, if you died right now, are you absolutely sure you're going to have to be with Jesus? You know what he's going to do? Well, he pulled out excuses 101. Well, my buddies, I don't do anything like they do. They go to church every Sunday. They do this, they do but But we go in the bars and they're drinking, they're pitching waitresses, and they're carrying out. The, I don't do those things. Only that Satan was, but Dad, are you going to let them send you to hell? And I asked him again. He said the same thing again, but when I said it to him again, all of a sudden he didn't have anything to say. Now my dad didn't get saved right away. I, mean, I, I wish I could tell you the story. Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't get that privilege. But as he was dying, someone did take Jesus to him again and accepted Christ as Lord. The sad part about it is four hours later, he, he went to glory. Well, he missed a whole lot of good time, didn't he? But see, some of us, that's what we get stuck on, huh? Man, four hours later, he died. He's in glory. No more arthritis. No more walking on canes. No more kids telling him what to do because he's too old to think for himself. I mean, he's in, he's in a great place. He's walking now. He's not crippled anymore. That's how you got to look at those things. But what if he wouldn't have got Jesus? Where would he have been? Now he's been in an eternity with our Father who are in heaven. That's exciting stuff. But we at least got to plan a seed. We've been given a gift. Starting in verse 6, is blessed and holy is the one who shares in what? The first resurrection. Man, that should be exciting about us. I'm there. The first resurrection is me. Why wouldn't you want someone else to have that? said, over such what the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. Now, that's that thousand year reign, but we're going to reign with him forever. Jesus said, what the Father has given to me, no man shall pluck from my hands. You've been given a guarantee and a promise. Next time someone, you hear someone just joking or trying to throw it up, most people that joke about hell, truthfully, have a fear of it. They just don't know how to get around it, so it's easier to joke it away. You know, it's just like spiders. When you're afraid of spiders, you act real tough, you like to squish them. But truth be known, if you didn't have to get that close to a spider to squish it, you probably wouldn't do it. I don't like spiders, I'm scared to death of spiders. You know, you guys think you're a really tough guy, but when a little spider comes in your room, it's like, Now, if you're living in my house, if my wife sees a bug, you're dead. <laughs> She's just got a face that just blows mine away. And if this is thrown on her ceiling, it's going to die. I have an understanding with all our spiders. You stay up there, you're safe. You come down here, you're dead. But see, I'd rather have them step there because now they're not messing with them. Here's the law. I don't want them crawling on me when I'm asleep. When I'm asleep, I don't care. But we do, we joke about the thing, we joke about the fears instead of dealing with those fears. I remember as a kid, I wasn't raised in church. But there was just something about hell scared me. You know, sometimes the parents would use that as ammunition. You know, we have stuff going to hell. So right away, we're already told that hell's a bad place, even with non-believing parents. But there's just something about it, it's scary. It's like that punishment you really don't want, but you get it anyhow. My mom was just forever telling me, don't do that, because if you do that, you're going to get spanked. And I would just do that, just to test the waters, and I'd get spanked. Same thing. Same thing with the difference between accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, being delivered out of the clutches of the devil, or the Bible warns us. The Bible warns us. That's not where God wants us. But when we get the warning and we make a decision, it's our consequence, isn't it? Turn with me to Matthew 25. I'd rather give you more Bible than a bunch of my lip. That's 
not fair, Mark, if you want to get everybody else. Hold on a second. I don't want to do the whole thing. Maybe we'll bring the whole thing. If I can get to it. Starting in verse 31. Now I'm going to read all those verses. Here's Jesus speaking again. So when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then will he sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he'll separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothed you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will truly will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of these, the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Now listen to this, verse 41. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you curse, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Where was hell prepared for? The devil and his angels. See, you prepare the place for them to be punished, not us. But if we don't do certain things, we don't come to him, what alternative is there? For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did you see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? And he will answer them truly, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do this to the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into what? Eternal punishment. But the righteous into eternal life. Now, when you hear Jesus himself continually talk about this eternal punishment, okay, he's not, he's not joking, he's not kidding, he's not playing it off. There is a place. And you have a choice. But when we say that we love our families, when we say we love our friends, when we say we love, are we giving them Jesus? Don't tell me that you love someone and don't use an opportunity to share Christ. We've talked about missed opportunities, haven't we? But when you have an opportunity, when someone shrugs off hell like it's not real, well, what an opportunity you have. Wait a minute. Let me tell you about the hell in Scripture. And I just gave you some Scriptures to take it to. It's not a fear factor, it's a fact factor. If we truly believe in the Word of God, that there's no errancy in God's Word, then we believe that there's a hell for those who deny the living God. Amen? We've got to love people enough to share the Gospel with them. Whose responsibility is that? Ours. We can't just do it on Sunday morning, can we? It takes more than just Sunday. Our lives are church seven days a week. Okay? We are the church. You've heard me say it before. This building is just a building we come and dwell in. We are the church. We are the church of the living God. There's people in the body of Christ still don't get that. We're still separated, aren't we? Well, you don't know, speak in tongues, I can't have nothing to do with you. You don't believe in healing, I can't have nothing to do with you. Oh, you believe in Jesus? His death, burial, and resurrection? And the only way into heaven is through Him? That's the body of Christ. That other stuff comes after. Amen? Get in the Word of God. You are saved for a purpose. And then you know what to do with that? To share with the lost and dying world. That's what we were saved by. We get caught up in everything else, don't we? Just like Paul's passed about distractions. Boy, we get distracted, won't we? We get distracted with the message that God gives. Oh, boy, boy, the preacher, I can't believe he's talking about hell again. I can't believe he missed the whole point. Yeah, the preacher's talking about hell again. What's God revealing to you out of that message? We need to be sharing Jesus with somebody. 
There's opportunities. When God makes opportunities, you use the opportunity. If God is speaking to you to speak to somebody, he doesn't want you coming back to pastor and saying, I need you to go talk to this family member because they need to hear about Jesus. Well, when did you find that out? Well, the Lord was speaking to my spirit, and why didn't you talk to him? I'm going to challenge you on that. Amen. If God's speaking to you to do something, he's not telling you to spread the message to the next saved person. He's wanting you to talk to that person he's wanting you to share with. Don't miss an opportunity. You know, feed someone, give someone a drink, clothe them, do that one thing, and tell them why you're doing it. Because that's what the Lord wants us to do, out of obedience to what? His Word. Not to our feelings, because it feels good. Sometimes it doesn't feel good, does it? It's not always about feelings. It's about a relationship. It's about the intimacy of the relationship you have with Christ. Everything you do is not going to feel good. It's like driving past that homeless person and already thinking about what they're going to use the money for that they're asking you about. Are you sure they're going to go get drugs? We don't know that, do we? We don't know that, but we won't stop and give them the time of day because why? Because we already think we know what they're going to do with the money that, we, that, we, that God's already spoken our heart to give them. What opportunity do we have right there? Jesus. That's what those blessing bags are for. Karen and I probably spit spat more about the blessing bag not being in the front seat. We went back and I said, where's the blessing bag? She's in the trunk. I said, I'm yelling at her because it was in the trunk. Whose responsibility is for to get the blessing bag? I that's mine too. But isn't it easier to be like, okay, we can't give out nothing because you put the blessing bag in the trunk. Those blessing bags are an opportunity for us, amen? Put a couple bucks in there. Don't worry about it. If, they're going to, if you give them Jesus, let Jesus take care of what he takes care of. Just give them Christ. I don't want that homeless guy in hell or that homeless woman in hell. You just heard what hell's like. If they die without Jesus, they're going to be raised again to what? Not to face happiness, but to face a second death. I can't imagine dying twice. I want to be raised in glory. I want to be raised in that, in that resurrection body, that brand new condition we're going to be. We're going to be raised like Him. Wow. We're joint heirs with Jesus. We get what He gets. That's exciting. We should want the world to get what He gets. That's what He died for. That movie, The War Room. I like that question that I want to ask. Do you deserve grace? No. We don't deserve grace. We don't. We don't think about that, do we? We think we got grace because we deserved it. We didn't deserve grace. We deserve judgment. We didn't get judgment, though, did we? But yet we as believers who cast judgment on it. Wow. That ought to wake you up a little bit. That gift, that grace was a free gift. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. He died for us. Because he knew on our own we were not going to make it. That's grace. That's a gift we don't deserve. Now we've been given a gift. What are you going to do with it? Let's pray. Father, we just come before you humbly. Father, just humbly. Break our hearts for what breaks you. And sometimes it just doesn't resonate enough in my life. Break our heart. What breaks yours? When someone just tries to shove off hell like it doesn't exist, and we know it does, God convict our heart to jump on that opportunity. Not because we're so smart, because we know everything, because we know the verse. It's because we know you. That's enough. We need to stop worrying about what we don't know and worry more about who we do know. And that's you, Lord. Use this church even in a greater way. I know you love this small church. This small body of believers. Use us in a greater way. Father, it was a small group of people that turned the world upside down for you. 
Lord, help us to be that kind of believer. Help us to be that kind of believer. There's someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Father, they would come to you today. As they would come to you today, say your word would not return void. We're going to stand on that word. Speak to hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Holding on to you in the middle of the storm. 